Dear Derry, welcome to Motivational Monday. For those of you who've never seen Motivational Monday, it is, amazingly enough, a Monday that I try to discuss something motivational. Um, it's usually a different topic, most often. Sometimes I repeat myself. And sometimes I repeat myself, just so you know. But um, it's usually a different topic every week. And I try to pick things that are relevant to what's been going on with me uh, lately. This past week, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine. And we were talking about how I never really quite communicated with him spontaneously. I mean, it was usually he said hi to me and I didn't usually talk to him first, you know, strike up a conversation. Um, and, you know, if, if he ever asked me how things were doing, I was like, you know, it's fine. But I never really engaged him much in conversation. And this past week, you know, I said, you know, how's it going? Kind of. And I say kind of because he still sort of triggered the the conversation. It was actually a tweet that he had sent out and I replied in private message through Google chat to him. And so I guess he didn't make the connection that still he had kind of triggered the conversation, but whatever. Um, anyway, so we got to talking about, you know, a much more, you know, serious and somber topic than that and why I was so reluctant to really communicate. I mean, because he and I have been friends for, two decades almost, you know, it's, um, we've been friends for a long time and there, there've always been these, these times where it seems like I just, I wasn't, you know, I was, I was just keeping him at a distance and, and never really telling him what was on my mind. And for a large portion of the thing, that was true. And as we went through the course of the conversation, he was like, you know, why is that? And I said, it was very simple. I was incredibly unhappy. I mean, it was just, you know, I mean, everything about my life has just been up to, up until recently, until about a year ago, maybe two, I was not happy. I mean, I, I can, I can put on a happy face. I can, I can easily, I can be happy for moments at a time, but having a happy life, no, I was never content with the way my, my life was going, um, because I never felt like I was doing anything that I was supposed to be doing, um, you know, I've, I've had a few technical jobs. I've done a lot of QA work. Um, and while it's, it's interesting, sometimes it's even fun and it's fascinating and there's a challenge to it and I can get into moments of it, jumping from one moment to the next. I'm exclusively within that moment and I'm never really looking forward to the next one. Um, and so it made me a very, you know, deep down inside a very unhappy person very unhappy i was just like this is not what i want to do with my life and i had no idea what i really wanted to do with my life i mean i had aspirations of, of acting and you know doing all sorts of other stuff but i didn't know how to get that going how to, I mean, what, what do i do and i didn't want to ask anybody for help because a i didn't want to have to rely on anybody because there's there's a pride factor you know at work there um, and an embarrassment factor as well, which are you know, pride and embarrassment tend to go hand in hand. Um, are just two sides of the same coin. Uh, you know, and I, I didn't want to burden anyone else with my sense of inadequacy. Um, and so what I did was I just shuffled everything off and I wouldn't really communicate things to people at all. You know, if anybody asked me how things were going, I would talk about those individual moments that things were fine but i wouldn't really let people in all that much because people were happy around me you know i make people happy just you know talking to people and and it brightens their day and that's fantastic and it was because i didn't dump my shit on them you know i didn't i didn't you know go on about what's bothering me so it was a couple of years ago i was at one of our, uh, one of, I was at our, our local furry convention. I was at further confusion, further confusion. And a friend of mine said, you know, Hey, there's this voiceover panel. Will you go with me? And I was like, no, I'm not doing anything else right now. 
you know, and, and I had done a little bit of voiceover work here and there, but nothing really big. And so we got in there and he was, we were flipping through, you know, the script and he was like, what, what is a, what does this accent sound like? And I was like, it, it, it sounds like, um, Inigo Montoya basically. And he's like, can you do that? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, will you do this scene with me? I'm like, okay. All right, fine, whatever. And so you know, we got up, we got we got behind our separate microphones and stuff, and we did the the scene. And when we were done, one of my friends who almost never compliments me on anything, <laughs> you know, uh, it's not that he's a jerk. He just is. We just, one we don't really travel in the same circles, and and. He's a little bit aloof. Okay, maybe he's a little bit of a jerk sometimes, but I still like him, and he's still a great guy. He's just, yeah. Anyway, so he came up, and he was like, I had no idea that you could do that. Wow, that was really quite cool. I was like, you know, coming from him, that was huge. And I was like, well, thank you. Thanks very much. That, that really means that really means a lot to, to hear somebody say that. Um, and the guy that I had done the scene with was just like, Oh my God. Oh my God. I've got, and so he started, you know, writing this script for this little animation that we want to get done. And, and like a year later, we were well, almost a year later. It was during a Super Bowl party. We, the same guy who was running the voiceover panel had brought all of his stuff and he'd set up microphones in one of the bedrooms upstairs at our friend's house who was blah, blah. So we recorded this, this test script thing. And you know, it was, it was great. I still have a copy of it. I still listen to it every now and again because I think it's really funny. Um, during the last Super Bowl party, back in whatever month it was, we were joking back and forth about how he's going to add to it and we need to do some rewrites and we need to re-record. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. No problem. Whatever. I'm happy to do so. Then, you know, last year, um, I got that big tax return because I was having EA take too much money out of my check out of my checks for taxes. And so I had this huge tax return, like a $3,000 tax return. I'm like, I can buy audio gear. And you know, so I went and I, and I bought all this stuff and I was like, I can start, you know, and, and really making a push for voice acting. I was like, huh. And as I started doing more and more and more and learning how this stuff works and how to use it correctly, it started getting better and better and better. And there was this, you know, everything just started to kind of I mean, blossom is perhaps not the right word, but maybe it is because the, the, the overarching theme eight minutes into the video, I now tell you what the theme is. It's passion. And that is something that I've not really had before. I mean, it's, it's it, like my, my, my aspirations of acting from way back when, yes, there's, there's passion there, but it's, it was so far buried under this sense of self-doubt this these you know i mean all kinds of other stuff it was virtually impossible to dust it off and, and get some light on it so that it could grow so i guess we'll call it a passion flower so yes blossoming is an applicable you know term for it but in the last year things have gone crazy good for me i mean just even, even if I haven't had any money coming in from doing this, which I, I don't have much coming in from this, and very, very little right now, most of the stuff that I'm doing is effectively, you know, for free. You know, it's a volunteer stuff that I've been doing every now and again. And, but there's a lot of it. And I keep thinking, man, if I was getting paid for all this stuff, there would be a lot of money coming in. It's like, okay, so, but more, more than the money, I've just been, or more than the hope and the, the knowledge that yes, I could make money doing this and very good money as well is this, this sense of passion that has been unearthed within me. And, and the fact that these aspirations are coming into these again, full bloom. And sometimes there is this, well, it took you long enough. It's like, shut up. We're busy. You know, kind of thing. it's like, there is this, this joy welling up inside of me that I have not known before from a you know work standpoint i mean i've i've been madly in love with with people that i've been in relationships with and it's very similar to that it's just not for a person it's for something that i'm doing but i've i've, I've always it's always had had that dead end job feeling this feels right 
this feels like thing this is what i need to do this is what i want to do this is so perfect for what i can do for what i want to do and for what i should be doing this is right for me and i feel genuinely happy because i'm finally doing something i'm passionate about and i want to do and it's unbelievable how much better i feel now than in the past 20 30 years just oh so i found two things while i was doing searches for motivational sayings and whatnot and i'm going to read these to you now passion is pushing yourself when no one else is around yeah <laughs> you know because even when i'm not working when i'm not recording anything when i'm just sitting down having dinner or i'm standing in front of the microwave boiling water while i'm making tea while there are birds flitting around outside in the trees i'm thinking about voice acting you know i'm, I'm going through different scenarios in my head going oh i could do this i could do that i could do this you know blah 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 oh i've got to remember to do this but instead of it being oh god i've got to write that test suite oh Instead of it being something that I'm like, you know, it's a chore that I have to do. It's something I'm like, yes, oh, I've got to do this, and I've got to do this, and I've got to do this. And so as more and more work comes in, I get more and more excited about it. What I have to do is I have to start moderating that because otherwise I will wind up taking on so much stuff that I can't do it all at one time. And then I'll start falling behind on projects. And that I kind of mentioned this yesterday that there is this bucket of work that is about to tip over on my head. And I, I've been perhaps unnecessarily cautious that I don't overextend myself and take on too much at one time and wind up flaming out. Um, so it is this balance game that I have to figure out where that tipping point is and then figure out which side I want to lean on for the day. The other little saying which i really should get to now that we're at 12 and a half minutes working hard for something we don't care about is called stress that's the last 20 years of my life working hard for something we love is called passion and that's where my life is now passion and i there are not words to describe how fantastic <laughs> Compare the way I was talking at the beginning of this episode to how I am now, and it's just, I get so giddy when I, oh, right, so find your passion and follow it, do it, I, I almost never say this, but be like me, go find your passion and make yourself happy, go, do it, until next time, be careless.